If you're currently not seeing success with your Google Ads campaigns and you are using a target ROAS or a target CPA bidding strategy, the problem is highly likely to be that you have set your target ROAS or your target CPA the wrong way. And I'm gonna be completely honest, setting your bidding strategy targets correctly is the hardest part of Google Ads to get right. So because it is the hardest part, it's something that should never be taken lightly. And you do need to understand that whenever you introduce a target bidding strategy, whether it be target ROAS or target CPA, you need to understand that that is a significant change to your Google Ads campaigns, and it's probably the most significant change that you can make. So what I wanna do in this video is I wanna break down the current best practices that surround introducing and setting a target bidding strategy. But before we get into today's training, just in case we haven't met yet, my name is Aaron Young, I'm from Define Digital Academy and I'm your 15,000 hour Google Ads master. So what you firstly need to understand with bidding strategies in Google Ads is that when you set a target, you are essentially saying to Google, you can spend my money if you can reach these results. So if you've got a budget of $1,000 a day and you set a target ROAS of 500%, you're saying to Google, you can spend $1,000 a day as long as you think you can give me a return of 500%. Now, the one thing that you do need to remember with that is that that budget of $1,000 a day, Google actually takes that as a $30,000 a month budget. So Google has the power to do what it wants with that. So that's why sometimes you'll see when you enter in a target ROAS, you could be spending three or four times your budget amount in a single day, and then you may not see any spending or you'll see very reduced spending for the next couple of days or even a week. So it's really, really important that when you do add in a target ROAS or a target CPA, that you do need to give Google time. So what I wanted to do here firstly, before we jump into some screen share, so I can show you some real examples of how to correctly set a target ROAS or a target CPA goal in Google Ads. I just wanna break down some of the core risks that are involved and what you need to make sure you've got in place in your account before you even look at adding in a target ROAS or a target CPA. And the first things that you need to be aware of is that when you add in a target-based bidding strategy, the number of impressions in your campaign can reduce dramatically. Now, while that may not sound like a bad thing for like a search or a shopping campaign, that can become really problematic if you're using a Performance Max campaign. The reason for that is because we know Performance Max campaigns have an inbuilt discovery element to their campaign. So they're, they're going out and finding those people at the top of the funnel, and then they're gonna come back and retarget those people further down the line, whether that be a couple of weeks or even a month later down the track. So the problem with setting your target bidding strategy incorrectly in a Performance Max campaign is that you could add in that target ROAS and you could see some good results for a period of three weeks to six weeks and then your campaign performance drops right off because by adding in that target ROAS, you've significantly reduced the number of impressions coming into your account. So when we fast forward two or three months down the track, you don't have the required number of people in your audiences that Google can retarget and remarket to. So that's the first thing you need to be aware of is that setting that target ROAS or that target CPA can reduce the number of impressions. The second thing is, and this is an important thing, is that it is highly likely, in fact, I can pretty much guarantee it that your CPC or your cost per click will increase. So when you want to start to add in a target ROAS or a target CPA strategy, you need to be aware that your CPC will increase and this isn't necessarily a bad thing because what you wanna be focusing on is that you wanna be focusing on your conversion metrics. And I've had to explain this time and time again with a client where they're really concerned that their CPC may have gone up by a dollar, but what we focus on is that we let them know that their cost per conversion has come down by $10. So yes, you're paying an extra dollar per click, but your cost per conversion has gone from $20 down to $10. So your total account is a lot healthier. But time and time again, I do see that people sometimes have an overly concerned focus on the CPC, where ultimately your conversion metrics are far more important. Especially when it comes to adding in a target-based bidding strategy, we know that your cost per clicks will likely go up because the better quality traffic that's more likely to convert is going to cost more. So you do also need to be aware that your CPC will go up. But as I said, just make sure that you switch your focus over to your conversion metrics. So they're the first two things I wanted to give a bit of a slight warning about introducing a target bidding strategy. 
that you can likely see your impressions drop and your CPC to go up. In both cases, it's not necessarily a bad thing. You just need to be aware of the other causes so that you can effectively evaluate what's happening with that target bidding strategy. So with that said, let's now jump into the four best practices that you need to follow when you're wanting to introduce a target bidding strategy into your Google Ads campaign. And the first thing is, and this is probably the most important one, is that you need to delay the decision. Now, one of the things that does frustrate me a little bit about the Google Recommendations tab is that after, say, two weeks, Google will start to give you a recommendation to introduce a target ROAS or introduce a target CPA. The reason for why this frustrates me is because when I've quizzed some different Google-based staff in their accelerator teams, and this is across two different countries, both of them have confirmed with me very, very clearly that Google's conversion data reaches back a total of 90 days, with the most important data being the last 30 days. Now, why that's so important is because before you look to introduce a target bidding strategy, you wanna finish one of those full cycles. And the reason for that is that you wanna be giving Google as much data as possible. So as a general rule, I do not look to introduce a target bidding strategy for the first three months. And I also wanna be seeing at least 30 conversions over the last 30 days. And the reason for that is remember the last 30 days is really, really important. And the more and more data we are seeing is that target bidding strategies work best when they're operating on campaigns that are supplying at least one conversion a day. And that's why you need that 30 conversions in 30 days. And the second thing is, is that you need to pick and stick. What I mean by that is that when you set or introduce a target ROAS or a target CPA, don't go changing that amount for the next 30 days. When we get into the screen share, I'll show you some real life examples of this, but it is highly likely that, especially over the next two weeks of introducing that target ROAS or that target CPA, that your account performance may go backwards a little bit, but then the results will quickly return and it will skyrocket. So when you do set a target bidding strategy, you need to have the patience and lend that run, especially for the first 30 days after setting it, without making any further changes to your bidding. Thirdly, you wanna have a stabilization of your results. And what I mean by that is that you wanna be seeing a four week period where your conversion metrics are staying around about the same. So if your account sees a ROAS of 500% one week, and then the next week it goes down to 150, and then the week after that it goes to 750, then it drops back down to 335%. That is not a campaign where you wanna introduce a target bidding strategy. What you wanna be looking for is you wanna be looking for a campaign that has a variance of no more than 20% or around about 20% each way. So what I mean by that is that one week you would have a ROAS of 440%, the next week it might be 435, the week after that, it might be 455, and then the week after that, week four, it might go down to 420. So it's still going up and down, but it's not a large increase and then a sharp decrease the week after. And then finally, the fourth core principle that you need to understand before you introduce a target bidding strategy is that you need to set that target of what the real results are in your account right now not what you want them to be. So what I mean by that is that you may want to achieve a target ROAS of 650% in your account, but if you're currently only seeing a ROAS of 400%, you need to set your target ROAS where it is now, not where you want it to be. So using that example, if you want to get to 650 and you're only currently at a ROAS of 400%, the next step would be to set your target ROAS at 420%. Then when you see a good four week period of your account getting somewhere between 420 to 460%, you can set your target ROAS up to maybe 450 or 460%. And then you slowly step up your target ROAS that way. When you're looking at target ROAS, you're all about climbing the ladder in that you're setting those target ROAS slightly higher each time to increase the ROAS. When we're talking about target CPA, we're climbing down the ladder in that we're setting that cost per acquisition slightly lower each time and to drive down those acquisition costs. That's a great way of thinking about it. Your target bidding strategy is a ladder that you go up or you climb down. So with all that said, as promised, let's jump into a screen share so I can show you a real account of how we've gone about and what factors we've taken into a place to introduce a target bidding strategy. All right, so the account that I'm showing you in here, I've broken this down to a weekly basis so you can see it in here. And we're looking at a long period of data from March to October this year. What I wanna show you in through here is you can see that we've seen a really good healthy increase in our number of conversions. But what I wanna break down for you is that you can actually see that for quite a while we weren't getting those results. I'm just gonna switch this over to monthly. Don't worry about this drop off at the end because obviously we're only looking at the 
first week of data for October. But you can see from here in the first month, we only got one conversion. The second month, we got 20 conversions. The third month, we got those 40 conversions, once again, hitting that 30 conversions in 30 days, and then it really started to skyrocket. And I want you to see when we added in that target CPA. So you can see that we waited three months and also waiting until we saw that 30 conversions in 30 days before we entered in that target CPA. It's gonna move back to weekly here for you because I wanna show you another couple of things. So what we can also see in through here is that with this target CPA, you can see here we weren't having Happy to add it in there because we're seeing these numbers jump up and jump down. But this period in here, before we added in that target CPA, you can see this range. We hadn't seen the big peaks and the big troughs. It was fairly stable through this part. And then when we go down to daily, because I just want to break this down a little bit further for you, is you can actually see when we introduced this target CPA, we actually saw an increase in our cost per conversion. It actually went up. Our cost per conversion actually skyrocketed up and then it started to drop down. The other factors that I wanted to show you in through here as well is that if we go through and look at our impressions, you can see that when we introduced our target CPA, this didn't have an effect on our impressions. So it did have an immediate drop down, but then our impressions jumped back up straight again. Now we have added in some budget increases, but at this time that I'm talking about through here is that we didn't start to increase our budget back to quite a couple of months later. So even though our impressions went down, they did return pretty quickly and they even grew. So that's another thing that you wanna be making sure. And then the last thing that I wanted to show you in through here as well is the increase in our CPC. Now this has eventually gone down, but what you can see is that when we did add in this target row, we did see some spikes in our CPC from 318 up to 450. This did start to come down again. And this is what I wanted to really reiterate is that when you do introduce this target CPA, don't be surprised if you do get some weeks with higher cost per conversions, or if you're doing a target ROAS, a lower ROAS, and a higher CPC. What you always need to be focusing on is the longer term data. And that's why I really encourage you that when you're looking at introducing a target ROAS or using those type of bidding strategies, you wanna really be breaking down longer terms of data. And that's why it's really, really healthy to not start introducing these until after the first three months, because you built up a large amount of data so that you're more confident when you're adding this in. And as I can show you from here, when we break this down to a weekly basis, you can actually see that, as you can see from here, we've had a really healthy, strong increase in the number of conversions. And this has come off the back of adding in that targeted bidding strategy. Now, I know that's a lot of information to take in. And if you would like to learn more about how to best set and evaluate bidding strategies for your Google Ads campaigns, I wanna give you access to an extended teaching that I gave inside my paid community. And if you wanna see this training for free, which is an extended teaching on how I implement bidding strategies for Google Ads campaigns, all you need to do is you need to follow that link in the description below, and that will take you through so that you can go through and watch that extended teaching on Google Ads bidding strategies. Once again, thank you for joining me. It's been a pleasure having you here. And if you'd also like to learn more about how you can set up advanced campaign strategies strategies across your total Google Ads account, I want you to go through and watch this video right here. Thanks again. See you next time.